In this video I will paint these models trying out some painting techniques for the first time. Airbrushing, pen wash, sponge chipping, oil dot, salt chipping and dry brush. It will look a bit like this. So before I get into these painting techniques using these scratch built models that will be part of a steampunk film, which is the whole point of this channel, let me take you back in time. So when I was a kid I made scale model aircraft and then I stopped making them. For years my creative outlet was acrylic landscape paintings. This was painted on location in Tarragona, Spain. Looking at it close up you can see it is really just a sketch with blocks of colour. I lived in Tarragona for one magical summer, painted loads of pictures and I sold them to tourists in different ways. This is much more recent, it's mixed media acrylic paint, ink, pencil and coloured pencil. So when I returned to model making for Retro Roboland, my first impulse was to paint the models like I would a two dimensional painting using acrylic paint art supplies. This is a brand new purchase, a cheap airbrush off Amazon, my first ever. Loading it up with undercoat and going to try it out. First on a piece of black plastic. Then I tried on the actual models themselves. It was okay, relatively easy to use, but a bit streaky. So I went and watched a Barbatos Rex one hour intro to airbrushing video that I will link below. And the big takeaway is that you can use the airbrush to dry your surface between thin layers. So you never have to have wet paint if you do it right. And to be honest, an airbrush is just another art tool and gets easier with practice. So my base colours here will be metallic aluminium and metallic copper. So having laid down the aluminium and then masked off some areas with tape, then I will go in and spray the copper. There is definitely something satisfying in using an airbrush. So I stripped off the tape and here are the parts with flat colour. Aluminium and copper looking shiny and new. When I tried a little experiment I mixed artist acrylic brown with thinner to make a thin coat to try spraying a kind of wash to dull the colour. It sprayed okay but it was hard to mix down and get a consistent colour. I think I'm better off using pre-mixed colours from Tamiya or Vallejo uh, and maybe come back to mix my own paint down the track. The next step I use some metallic artist paint to paint the pipes, a very attractive gold colour which actually looks like brass. This would be hard to do with an airbrush so just using a fine brush. Um, I also use silver to paint the little pipe holders contrast with the aluminium in a subtle way. So I'm going to try it here at sponge chipping. Most of these techniques come from a pair of videos, one from Dave's Model Workshop, the other Panzermeister 36. I will link to their videos in the description, each explaining five weathering techniques. So the theory here is that you can cut a dish sponge into an odd shape, dip it in paint, get rid of most of the paint, then apply to your model in a gentle dabbing motion. And you should get sl small, slightly random chips. These are usually paint chips, but with the all-metal, non-corroded look, I guess these would just be oil stains on my model. Then you go over and expand and change the dots through adding them with using a paintbrush. This technique on my model just seemed a bit out of scale, so I did end up over spraying with either aluminium or copper. It just didn't look right. The next thing I tried was an oil wash. So you leave oil paint out on cardboard for a few hours until the linseed oil drains away. And then using a mixing tray, mix the dark brown oil paint with isopropyl alcohol. And making sure you're wearing a mask and working in a well ventilated area. And then you paint it over areas of detail, let it seep in. Because it's oil, you have quite a bit of working and drying time. And then you can clean up what you don't like with a clean paintbrush. This is a really effective technique, and I like how it came out. Right, so the next technique I will try out is the oil dot technique. So I've left out oil paint for several hours. I have six different colours of oil paint on the card to allow the linseed oil to drain out. And then I apply a tiny dot of different colours evenly spaced out over the model surface. So then you take another brush dipped in the slightest hint of isopropyl alcohol and just brush across the surface. Now this did look good, however on the piston it brushed all the way through three layers of paint back to the plastic underneath. 
A bit of research showed I should have painted a varnish coat to seal the paint. So then I tried out this technique on the copper. Once again laid down little dots of colour all over the brass boiler, then blended it in using a clean brush with a tiny amount of isopropyl alcohol. And I really like the look. Although I would note that the oil paint does dull the sheen of the metallic paint, so I then took my airbrush and touched up aluminium on the part rubbed through on top of some undercoat. I did selectively restore the sheen with metal paint in a few areas to give it some contrast. The next technique I'm trying out is sea salt weathering. So step one is to spray water all over the model. And then you grind sea salt crystals on top and let the water dry to form crystalline salt. Now Dave's model workshop recommends a thin wash as a contrast color. So I mixed thinner Vallejo copper and Vallejo brown, which should be a darker color, but transparent enough to show the oil dot color variation we've already established. So the test on paper looks pretty good. Then I sprayed out over the whole boiler with this glaze right over the crystalline salt with my airbrush. So then the final step is to take a clean paintbrush, dip it into water and remove the crystalline salt with the paintbrush and a cotton bud. So in theory this should leave a mottled two-tone look with a second contrast colour in random dots. However for me this time it did not seem to work at all. Perhaps my paint was too thinned down. Uh, we'll play with this off camera a bit because Dave got fantastic results. Alright, the last technique I will attempt in this video is dry brushing. Just note that prior to the salt technique I sprayed a matte varnish over the entire model. So here I am just using a makeup brush and picking up some metallic bronze paint, just brushing off most of it and then I just dust it off across the model which has the effect of adding bright metallic highlights. I then use silver metallic dry brushing to add highlights, particularly to edge surfaces. This technique looks pretty cool. So let's look at the final painted model. Please let me know in the comments what you think. So please like this video and subscribe to Retro Roboland. And come back again to see my steampunk movie slowly come to life. On screen now are several videos I've previously made that are worth a look. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.